So as we stated, uh, being polite means protecting each other's face. That is, uh, protecting each other's positive face, we want to be valued, and protecting each other's negative face, we want to be left alone. Uh, yet, in social life, we sometimes have to have conflicts that threaten each other's face. In order to manage and deal with that, we've developed several different strategies uh, that we use to ease some of that face damage. And they're listed here. Uh, when we must threaten each other's face, we can use um, avoidance, going off the record, negative politeness, positive politeness, or the favorite of your bald professor, bald on the record. Uh, and I'll go over each of these and try to give some examples. And then we'll look at an email uh, that um, we can apply these five strategies to maybe do a short little quick analysis. So the first one is avoidance. And um, that's really you know, kind of sidestepping the problem, either uh, for a short period of time or maybe even for an extended period of time. And uh, we would do this uh, because maybe we don't have enough time to deal with whatever the problem is. And so we want to wait for perhaps a better time. Um, or we've decided that for whatever reason, uh, this issue isn't that important to us. Maybe we have other issues that we need to attend to first. Or maybe we just decided that, you know, it's something that we can uh, probably just tolerate. Uh, but avoidance is just choosing not to engage in communication that threatens another person's face. Let's say uh, you have a job and you want to get your shift covered, uh, but you, uh, cause you, you know, you got something you want to do on the weekend, uh, but you're a little nervous about asking somebody because you don't want to put them in the position where they have to say no. Uh, you know how much everybody else likes having the weekends off. And you're going to have to ask those people who have the weekend off uh, if they'll consider taking your shift. Just putting them in that uncomfortable spot alone might be enough for you to want to avoid it. And so instead, you just uh, call in sick and you solve your problem, uh, but you, you do so perhaps not in the best way. And I think that's something to remember about avoidance is um, while it can be very useful, it just kicks the can down the road and oftentimes postpones the inevitable. So if you have the time and you have the um, patience <laughs> at the moment for some good communication, it's probably best to address the issues. And you can use some of these other strategies when you go about uh, addressing the, the issue. You could go off the record. Uh, this is an interesting one. It's kind of passive, right? Uh, it's where you're going to indirectly mention the face-threatening topic uh, rather than directly going into it. And the hope is that when you're subtly hinting um, about it, you can leave it open for interpretation. You can kind of leave the person to come to their own conclusion about what it is you're, you need or what it is you're asking. Uh, and so uh, I'm thinking of... You know, uh, your roommate hasn't been pulling their weight around the house. Maybe you say something like, I really miss when we, we first moved in here and everything was always so tidy, right? Uh, you're kind of being nostalgic about when you first move in. I remember that clean carpet smell we used to have. Uh, that was really nice. Uh, and, you're, you know, you're suggesting perhaps that uh, the place is not as clean as it used to be. We need to do something about it. Uh, with our uh, getting our shift covered example, uh, you know, I'm really bummed I have to work this weekend. My best friend is visiting from Phoenix. I haven't seen him in three years. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, so you don't have plans this weekend? Oh, that's, that must be nice. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you're bringing up the topic. You're expressing your kind of need, but you're indirectly um, suggesting that you need your shift covered. And you're hoping that the other person is going to connect the dots. Uh, the strength of this is you don't really have to threaten their face at all. It's subtle. Um, it, it's gentle. It's polite. Um, at the same time, it's, it's perhaps 
uh, has some of the weaknesses of avoidance and uh, it it's gonna leave your problem unresolved especially if you're um, say giving hints to your uh, romantic partners about um, you know it be it's really nice that uh, my friend Shauna and 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 her partner do all these fun new things together. So you're kind of subtly hinting, yeah, it'd be nice if we would do fun new things. Why not just maybe uh, say that directly rather than hinting at it? So could be useful, and um, it's definitely something that should be in the arsenal, but something that we probably shouldn't rely on always. Negative politeness, again, remember negative doesn't mean bad politeness. In this case, we mean face work that we do to try to protect or support another person's autonomy, their ability to make their own decisions and make their own choices. And so this is where we're going to protect um, other people's autonomy through kind of apologizing for putting them in the position that we're putting them in. Or uh, even, and this is kind of creative, uh, self-effacing our own image, so kind of attacking our own selves, self-deprecating uh, as a way of minimizing by contrast the threat that you did to that person's face. You're going you're gonna to threaten your face worse uh, so that it doesn't seem so bad. Um, and this, this is, even though that seems, uh, again, a little uh, uh, indirect, it can, it can be effective. And so you know, this is, these are things like, you know, I'm really, really sorry. I have to ask you if you can work for me. You know, I don't normally do this. This is an extraordinary time, you know. So that's the only reason I'm going to uh, attack your negative face. Uh, feel free to say no, even though I'm, I want you to say yes, and I'm going to put you in an uncomfortable position of, of having to tell a friend no. Uh, I'm going to say emphatically here, feel free to say no, you're totally free. You're not, your autonomy has not been attacked. Uh, I know that I can sometimes be a burden. Oh, I know that I'm, I'm such a mess of a friend and I'm always asking you for things. I know how bad of me. Uh, so I'm going to kind of performatively attack my own face as a way of, um, you know, if I'm attacking my face more than yours, uh, it's going to feel less to you, uh, the threat. Um, positive politeness, that was negative, right? Remember, not bad. And this doesn't mean good politeness. This just means politeness or face work that's supporting the positive face. People's desire to be liked and valued and, and seen as attractive. Um, so positive politeness is using our communication to, to make people feel valued, respected, uh, like they have dignity. And so we can use things like flattery, uh, compliments to ease whatever uh, the face-threatening act is. You, want, you need to ask something from your roommate. You know, you're the best roommate I ever had. Uh, it might be how you started off with. Uh, you know, living with you is living easier than living with, with anybody else. It's absolutely perfect with the exception of this one thing, right? Uh, so flattery there, compliments. Um, you're so responsible and hardworking. Surely you'd want to cover my shift this weekend because uh, you, just, you just always work so hard and you're so responsible. <laughs> I can't think of a better person to cover my shift, right? Or, um, you know, you, you're, you're going to ask somebody to babysit your kids. Uh, my kid just absolutely loves you. Every time you, you come over, they just keep talking about you for days on end. Uh, you're such a positive influence on my kid. Uh, I, could, I couldn't think of anybody better to babysit my kid. In fact, I would be honored if you babysat my kid. So really buttering them up with the positive politeness. And then finally, the last one, uh, bald on the record. Um, and this works well uh, because it's direct. But its weakness is it's direct. <laughs> it can feel rude uh, to people. So... Uh, bald on the record is, I, I think, you know, something you definitely want in your repertoire, but it's probably good to mix it with the other ones as well. Um, so complete bald on the record would be just not making any attempt to help save face. You're just going to directly tell them uh, what you want. Hey, you're being annoying, right? Uh, that's bald on the record. It's attacking their positive face. They're going to they're gonna view that as rude, right? Um, 
hey, you need to cover my shift. No attempt at saving face. Uh, they're going to view it as rude. There are certain situations, of course, where you want to be absolutely clear um, with people about this when it comes to things like consent and, and touch and um, uh, your own personal safety and things like that. You know, bald on the record is certainly um, a good strategy. Uh, try to own your feelings when you're going bald on the record is one thing I would say. Don't, don't accuse other people of things. Um, you're doing this, you're doing that, you're like this, you're like that. Um, you know, try to stick to observing what it was that you saw that's making you feel this, the way that you're feeling and then own your feelings, you know. Um, uh, lately, it's seemed to me that when we talk, you're not listening. When, when that happens, I feel sad, I feel bad about myself, and I feel like um, th that maybe our friendship isn't, isn't great, you know. So uh, try to own your feelings. Uh, this is how I feel. And then, you know, state what you need. I need you to, to listen to me, look at me while we're talking, get off your phone, or um, I need you to stay home tonight and uh, you know, be in tonight. I know you like to go out uh, on Fridays, but tonight I need you to stay in, right? And just being clear, stating your needs and your feelings and owning them and not accusing other people um, or, or um, holding other people responsible for how you feel, um, taking care of it. Uh, cover my shift this week and you owe me. That's pretty bald on the record. Uh, you know, hopefully you're friends with this person because, yeah, this could be seen as potentially rude, not polite at all. Um, I, I need you to pay more attention when I'm talking to you, okay? Uh, bald on the record. Again, mixing this with some of the other strategies and kind of getting here um, eventually in the conversation is probably a really good way to go about um, Resolving your conflicts, helping them save face, helping yourself save face. So uh, just to summarize, they, they are avoidance, going off the record, negative politeness, uh, positive politeness, and bald on the record. And I want to take a look at an email. Uh, this is uh, based on a true story, but it, it's definitely been fictionalized here for the purposes of this example. Um, so here's an email. Uh, let's say that I am the advisor of a student club and something's happening uh, where I'm going to have to ask my colleagues to do something for me. Uh, I'm basically telling them what to do. So I'm going to be uh, threatening, potentially definitely threatening the negative face of uh, my colleagues, but also maybe even their positive face. This is going to maybe cast them in, in the light of um, um, not uh, taking due diligence when they should have. Uh, so it's going to potentially affect their positive face too. So let's take a look and think about some of those strategies and how maybe I deploy them here. Hello, dear colleagues. As you know, I'm the advisor of the Gender and Sexuality Alliance Student Club. I've received a lot of support uh, from our department, especially when I was struggling with my tenure file. Your interest in and support of the GSA and its efforts is much appreciated. Uh, recently, communication students from many of our sections have been attending GSA meetings to complete a COM 101 assignment in which they observe and write about a cultural group. I think this is a wonderful assignment that can expose our students to a multicultural organizational small group event. Still, GSA members have a few requests for our communication students studying GSA meetings to limit disruption and maintain a safe and open environment. Uh, first, I know it can be difficult, but please give the GSA president a heads up a week before the scheduled meeting that students will be observing. Second, we'd like to limit the number of observers to four per meeting. I'm sending you good energy as the semester heats up. I know I need it. Have a great weekend. Okay, so potentially, right, uh, this is, I'm telling them that they need to take some action that could be seen as rude. And I'm also telling them, you know, that they've created an assignment where they didn't think about this ahead of time. Uh, and so they might feel attacked as teachers or something like that as well. So uh, let's see, what do I do? Uh, I don't really use avoidance here, right? Uh, but maybe I had been avoiding this for a while and I waited till, till um you know, I felt like I needed to take action. I, I waited. I thought this problem was going to resolve itself. I tried, tried to maybe even use 
um, off the record a few times. Maybe uh, at a department meeting, I told a story about how stressed out the Gender and Sexuality Alliance president was um, with all these observers coming into the meeting and not knowing who they were. So I could, you know, subtly hint that there's a problem, uh, but that's not what I do. I do uh, go um, and directly address the issue. Um, but I don't go completely bald on the record. I go bald on the record here, right? Uh, still, the GSA members have a few requests. Back up. Still, the GSA members have a few requests for communication. And then, first and second, here are the requests that I have, right? So that's where I go bald on the record. Uh, do you see any positive politeness in in this? Places where uh, maybe I'm buttering up my colleagues, giving them compliments, thanking them. Uh, so, oops, uh, I said here, right, I've received lots of support from you guys. So a little buttering up here, positive politeness. Um, your interest and support is much appreciated. Um, and then down here, um, I'm sending you good energy. Have a great weekend. Okay, so some positive politeness here. And then what about negative politeness, places where I kind of shore up their autonomy um, or I do uh, self-effacement maybe. Um, I said here, especially when I was struggling with my tenure file, you know, this is a little indirect, but um, it's kind of a way of saying, hey, uh, I'm not perfect. I needed help before and you guys helped me. So um, I know that no, nobody's perfect. And down here, I know I need it. Okay. Um, this, this could be uh, something that would get, uh, I think, annoying or be seen as a, a personality flaw if you would consistently beat yourself up. Uh, but a little self-effacement, self-deprecation uh, might ease some of the pain of this letter. Um, another place where I see negative uh, politeness is right here. I know it can be difficult. Okay, so we see all of the examples here, and uh, that is face work. Uh, so negative and positive face uh, is the component of politeness, right? It is trying to protect each other's positive and negative faces, and politeness theory gives us a language for thinking about this kind of cooperation and how we can uh, ease any conflicts that are inevitably going to rise.